Well, it's been a while since I've done an IG Live, and actually today I'm going to do this with the amazing Terry Cochran. And so we're going to talk about ways that you can help support your immunity and immune function, especially as we are heading into flu and cold season. And on top of that, we are dealing with the impact of COVID. And so we want to talk about proactive ways you can support your immunity. Hi, Terry. How are you? Friend, how are you? Good. So I was kind of talking a little bit about the impetus. I know people really loved our last um, IG Live. And so talking about ways we can support immune function, you know, heading into the cold winter months. I know a lot of times people start getting anxious and worried. And certainly there's a product that Terry uh, invented that not only myself, but also my children all enjoy. And so we'll touch on that as well. So what are some of the things that you like to talk to your patients about when it comes to supporting a healthy immune function, especially as the temps are starting to get a little colder and do it proactively so we don't have to worry and stress about it, but just things that we can integrate into, um, you know, into the foods we're eating and our supplement regimen as the weather is getting colder. Um, you know, that's a great question. And this year we've got so much going on, uh, mm -hmm. potentially another, you know, real virulent flu season with, you know, our friend Baltimore, as some of our colleagues call, call it. <laughs> And so it's ever important that the immune system become robust. And um, we'll get into more of the mind-body uh, piece in a minute uh, through uh, our friend Joe Dispenza, who's such an authority on how our thinking can actually express our genes and lower our immune system. But really practical approaches to the colder weather months. So the way that we stay healthy is we have to maintain a certain body temperature. First of all, so making sure that our thyroid is working properly and a really good way to manage thyroid function from a food perspective is through seafood. Zinc and selenium are super important and especially kelp, which is also a broad spectrum antiviral. So I would say as you head into these winter months, really uh, increase your seafood uh, and fish intake, but in particular the shellfish. Um, you've got the mussels, the oysters, um, like a seafood paella would be amazing with brown rice, uh, sashimi. So you're getting, if it's good quality, getting that zinc and selenium, which is really important. And then seaweed salads are excellent. Uh, and then our little seaweed snacks that are just like little kelp or seaweed papers, yeah. uh, super important. So we have to keep, first thing is, let's just keep our body temperature up. When again, also make sure that when you're going outside, almost 70% of body heat is lost through our head. So make sure that we have a nice little head covering when we're outside. If it's, if it's below, especially if it gets below freezing, that's really important. And then our feet as well, making sure that if you're home and you're cold, then maybe even a little space heater so you're not paying a whole lot of money to warm up the entire home but just a little guy that's going to cost you almost nothing in electricity to kind of mm -hmm. keep your feet warm. And then warm and nourishing teas like cinnamon and ginger that increase body temperature. Chili, cayenne pepper, you know, yeah. those things that make you sweat increase your body temperature. So warming teas, making sure your head is covered when you're outside and also your feet. Uh, when you're inside, making sure that that body temperature stays up. So that's that's one of the really simple, simple things. It's interesting. Kim just said, I thought cold thermogenesis was beneficial for the body. And so I'm actually interviewing Wim Hof next week. So I'm curious to know, and I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to let you respond, but I think one of the things that I think about is, you know, when we're doing cold thermogenesis, it's like a controlled amount of time. It's not like you're just going to sit outside in your underwear for hours on end. It's, you know, a minute, two minutes, five minutes of time. And yes, we know that is a hormetic stressor, but curious to know what your thought is on that. Yes. So great question. And I love Wim Hof. I think he's awesome. Uh, one of my really good friends was personally trained by him. Oh, cool. And, and so cold thermogenesis, this is a great way to bring the limbic system down. It's our reptilian brain, it's over engaged. We go into this very controlled, very cold environment for a very short period of time. Yes, that is an autonomic nervous system re-regulator. It's a reset, boom, boom. But when you're in a cold environment for long periods of time, 
then over a long period of time, that decreased body temperature can let in uh, certain viruses and pathogens. Just as we know, what does the body do when it's trying to fight something? It creates a fever. Yep. We get hot. So heat kills <laughs> those bad boys. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it's interesting, um, someone was asking me the other day, sometimes when they fast, they will get cold. And so I remind them that sometimes that can be blood sugar, maybe you need to break your fast a little, you know, sooner than you had anticipated. I know as the temperatures have started to come down, there have been a couple of days where I've gotten cold. And so I've just have allowed myself and say, like, okay, I'm going to break my fast early. Might be a blood sugar issue. But the point being, you know, just kind of listening to your body, being attuned and not being rigid. I think that's you know, I know that we are very aligned on um, making sure that we're kind of attuned to that. Tips for people, tissues with temp regulation due to underlying issues like dysautonomia or hypothyroidism. Yeah, so again, so how do we keep our temperature uh, regulated with dysautonomia or thyroid? So with dysautonomia like POTS, we wanna make sure our, our minerals are really there for us. And so uh, bioplasma salts are really important putting a little salt in your tea, actually, mm -hmm. to bring that vasoconstriction in, make it pump a little harder, um, make a sweat movement. So another thing is, if we're cold, one of the greatest things we can do is start moving. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about putting on some Michael Jans uh, Jackson and dancing to ABC, you know? Uh, really, you know, where a lot of us are shel still sheltering in place, we're working from home, get up and move. It's going gonna, it's gonna to move that lymph, which is also important to keep those pathogens moving, but it's also going to help raise that body temperature. So really simple things around body temperature regulation. And again, hypothyroidism, uh, unless you have Hashimoto's and you have to watch that iodine, iodine, natural iodine, again, through the food, the seafood, the kelp, the seaweed is really important. Yeah. And so what are some of the other things we can do? I know I get a lot of questions about supplementation. Um, there's a product I want to be very upfront. I'm a huge supporter of Terry's uh, products and her methodologies, but there's a particular supplement that you um, have created. So let's touch on that a little bit because it, it's pretty unique. There's nothing that I know that's like it on the market. And it's something that myself and my children take. And actually I, I take one every day. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, so thank you for that. So before I decided to go into my own creation and formulation of supplements, I actually spoke with some of our largest uh, designers of and manufacturers of supplemental health products, the best in the market. I'm like, Hey guys and girls, you may be putting some ingredients in there that have sulfuric compounds that can downregulate your phase one liver detoxification, that can impair methylation, that may have some oxalate contributing properties. And those are big gene movers. One ingredient can throw off the entire supplement complement. And I believe that supplements are like a symphony and everybody has to be playing the right notes at the right time. So they're not expressing uh, potentially your genetic predisposition. So when I suggested to them, hey, I can help you. And they're like, we really don't wanna, we, we like you, but you know, you go do your thing. I'm like, okay, I will. So I, I, I actually created my immune mover, which was my very first supplement. I now have three immune movers, stress mover and wild lights. But this immune mover, I have to say, Cynthia, I'm really proud of it because it's now been uh, in use for over three years. Thousands and thousands of people have availed themselves from it. I can't tell you how many, yourself included in your family, come in here and say, wow, I was feeling sick. I took my immune mover and I was better, you know, within a day. I, we, just got, we just got an email yesterday about someone saying, I, what is, it was actually, it wasn't an email. I apologize because we get a lot of emails. It was one of my mom's friends and they're in their 80s and they actually got sick in Miami and my mom gave them the supplement. He's like, what is elixir is this? I was feeling well. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, within, you know, 24 to 48 hours. So what I love about the immune mover, it's, it's very broad spectrum. It covers all sorts of pathogens for immune support. It covers uh, parasites because we have black walnut in there. It covers uh, strep because we have barberry. It covers viral because we have powdarco and other, other supportive properties. Now, you know, again, this is not a, a pharmaceutical antiviral or antibiotic. It is a stress supporter. I just want to make that clear. But I will tell you what's so great about this is a lot of our pharmaceuticals, we can only take them for a short period and then our gut biome is eradicated and we're in trouble. 
this is really, I call it everyone's new every day because our staff actually takes it every day. I take it every day. I've been traveling a lot back and forth, even during this uh, novel season. I traveled to California almost monthly and I swear by it. I just, I take it multiple times a day when I'm traveling and I'm, I'm uh, you know, potentially exposing myself. Now, of course I take great care, but I know that this has on many occasion personally helped me rebalance quickly and it can only support it is a it is a mover of immunity in the sense that you don't have to worry about taking it and then having it flip something on the other side it's really holistically supported yeah and i i think one of the things that's so interesting is as I've learned more about herbal agents and things that are naturally occurring in, in nature, before we had antibiotic therapies, these were the components of a lot of things that um, you know medicinal people used years and years ago and, and are, can be as effective as uh, things that are created in a lab. How's that? Oh, I love it. Absolutely. So for example, well, herbology, pharmacology came from herbology, and then they extract that active ingredient from that whole plant. But what they created, I believe, in a lot of cases, I call it whack-a-mole, because mm. the herb had the entire balancing property that would help support the movement, that symphony, that dance, that music inside the, the beauty of that uh, supportive herb. But when you extract a property and you remove all the balancing properties that help this property do well long-term, then it becomes out of balance. Uh, similar, I, I liken it to when we uh, take our cereal, we strip it of everything. It's natural B vitamins and it's magnesium and all of the minerals and, and goodness that, that live in a whole grain. And then we fortify it, we pull it, we put it back in, it's not the same thing. The body does not assimilate it the same way. And what we do know is there are over 120,000 deaths every year from pharmaceuticals. This is not overdosing. This is from a, just taking a pharmaceutical and oops, that didn't work with me. Whereas if you think of herbs, the numbers are staggeringly lower. And what I love about herbology is that because it's very much in line with the body, it will start giving you little simple warning signs if it doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a little bit of a headache or I'm a little bloated. I don't feel energetic, but it's not like all of a sudden you have liver disease uh, <laughs> or kidney, your kidney are failing. I had a client of mine on a pharmaceutical. It was very rough on her kidneys. I kept expressing to her my concern around that. Well, she ended up in third stage kidney failure. Uh, when the doctors were saying it was fine. Well, it wasn't. And they had told her she needed to take this all along. And all of a sudden, you have to stop taking this because you're in third stage kidney failure. Well, that's a big whoops, right? Um, in general, and I'm not saying that all herbs are super, super safe. I, I'm very center line. I try to research and I, when I got into this business, I was an herbal, herbalist. So herbology was my kind of my first jam <laughs> as I got into this world. And so I'm very careful, uh, and especially in this formulation, I'm, I'm very careful even in the way that I recommend supplements in office to stay away from those kind of fringe ones. It might be a little bit stronger, but in general, herbs can be extremely safe and efficacious. Yeah, well, I think that's fascinating. I didn't actually know that about you, but let's pivot a little bit. I know we just have a little bit more time, but what are you personally doing differently given the pandemic? Um, are you eating differently? Are you prioritizing more self-care? Are you changing the way you're taking your supplements? Because a lot of the questions I get um, are, are so fear-based. I think people feel really overwhelmed and they want to be proactive. And, and uh, I feel like there's so much conflicting information. It's really hard sometimes to be able to, to keep people feeling hopeful and the glass half full kind of mindset uh, when there's so much stressful things that are going on around us. Uh, great question. So my personal uh, self-care uh, daily uh, employment is that I get up and I try to exercise regularly. Again, movement is key. Even if I'm exhausted and I work long hours, but movement and it helps me clear my lymph. It helps immune system for me. I don't over exercise, but I run about two miles a day and then I'll just do a simple workout 30, 35 minutes in the morning. And then maybe on the weekends, I will do a 45 minute, but I'll try to exercise four to five days a week. I think that's critical. 
Another thing that I'm doing every single morning is I'm starting with my wild lights is after I, I, I run and uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is super important to keep that liver clean. So liver detoxification, folks, if our liver's backed up, we're in trouble. And so that's our biggest, you know, kind of recycling bin for toxins in our body. So I do vitamin C, I do my wild lights, and I do my green juice every morning, which is cilantro and cucumber. Uh, and I add it all together, green juice keeps, I call it a, a nutrition IV. Uh, so that's really cl clearly important for me. One of the things I also do, I'm taking my immune mover every day and I'm not a daily supplementer uh, of regular supplements generally. However, during this time, I am clearly supplementing with zinc, zinc carnosine and quercetin. There's been a lot of studies on how zinc helps stop replication of messenger RNA viruses, hint, hint. There's a virus going around that's a messenger RNA virus. Uh, quercetin helps bring zinc into the cells. Um, vitamin C again, vitamin D, which is a hormone precursor. You know, as women uh, that are postmenopausal, we need that vitamin D to help mm -hmm. with insulin. Insulin's super important to keep our immune system and our thyroid, again, body temperature, keeping oh. that body temperature up. Um, so I have my daily uh, C, Wild Lights, Immune Mover, um, Zinc, Quercetin. And so another thing that I do is I try to really take whatever I'm, what's going on in the day and know that the dominant vibration brand wins. Even if there's, if it may look chaotic on the outside, I have to know that I have a choice in how mm -hmm. I perceive anything going on around me. That going on around me will not change just because I'm freaking out about it. It's still going to be there. <laughs> and, you know, more and more studies show that when we are in a state of constant fear, not let's be pragmatic and get out of the way from that, that car that is going to come and careen onto the sidewalk as I'm, you know, strolling. We got to make sure that we're clearly in movement mode and our bodies are in, in full force to be able to move our muscles. But this constant slow drip, fear, uncertainty, um, you know, lack of security, where what's happening around my world with, you know, a lot of children who are changing the way that they go to school, so much change around that and how we, how we exist in our homes anymore, a lot of change. And so really important that we can say, okay, I understand this is really rigorous, but I'm gonna do everything I can to have the dominant vibration win, and my dom dominant vibration is gratitude. So if I can stay in gratitude, boy, I'm feeling really good. I'm lucky that I, I, I can think and talk this way today. So just the small things that bring us, you know, really big gratitude. And then another thing that I'm doing at night, because our world is very busy in our practice, and I've got a lot of stuff going on, is that I'm really opting to take down the lights after 9 o'clock and candlelight only. Oh, I love that. Yeah, just really, really, if I'm having to do a little bit of work, I've got my candle by my computer as I'm going into bed, candles, candles, candles. And then on the weekends or even in the mornings if I'm driving yesterday, I had an early appointment before work. The, the music of the Baroque period helped to synchronize the heart and the brain. That is 60 beats per minute. So I was listening to Debussy yesterday, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Mozart. Uh, those masters help the, the heart brain synchronicity. So all those things, it, it really, it's small, but it's, it's actually very powerful. Yeah. Well, I, and I love hearing what other people are doing to keep themselves centered and grounded and healthy. And so I know that people were asking in the comments, um, Terry has three amazing supplements. I actually take them all. Um, and I really believe in them, but People were asking, what's the easiest way for them to connect with you and get more information or actually purchase these things? And I want to just interject one thing about the electrolytes, especially when our bodies are stressed, we are losing more electrolytes. If you are also intermittent fasting, you are losing more electrolytes, especially, you know, a net serum sodium or salt load in our urine. So you have to be really mindful. Like people tell me all the time, I don't need electrolytes. Yes, you do. So this is a really nice, easy, clean way to supplement those as well as support stress and immune function in the body. But 
Terry, please let people know how to connect with you and purchase these supplements. I know there were several people on the feed that were asking. Absolutely. So uh, just link in bio through Instagram. Uh, you can get to all of our supplements uh, through our website, terrycochran.com. And we really like to educate uh, when we put anything out, whether it's a, a one minute video or uh, an Instagram post or a supplement line. We've done a lot of our homework. And so I really invite you all to go to the website and read why, why these were formulated the way they were. And then just look at our website. We've got so much information. So you can get them basically through, through the website, but link and bio will take you there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Like I said, I know that uh, you've got a packed schedule as do I, but the one thing I want to reassure people, I've gotten a lot of DMs. They really like our lives together. So I promise they will come back. Uh, we just have to coordinate our calendars, but let me know in the comments, what are the things you're interested in learning the most about as it pertains to nutrition and health and wellness? I know that's kind of a broad concept, but it helps with content creation and, and how we can better serve you. Absolutely. And we're even color coordinated, Cynthia. I love it. <laughs> it just felt like a day, you know, it's a little gray outside. I felt like I needed a little bit of color, but something that was kind of calm and soothing. Yeah, I love it. Me too. It's always so great to be with your audience. You're such a wealth of knowledge. I'm so grateful to know you as a colleague and a friend. So thank Thank you. Likewise. Likewise, have a great rest of your day. All right, my dear. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.